This channel really has been Jugdro theme recently, hasn't it? It's not even really my favorite world in this series, but you have to admit it's pretty interesting. And the Jugdral train is not gonna stop as we have Thracia 776 to cover now. As one of the last games to be released for the Super Famicom, and the last official Fire Emblem game to be headed by Shouzo Kaga, there's a lot to cover here. So, let's get started! Welcome to History of the Emblem, Thracia 776. Development for Thracia 776 began in 1998, two years after the release of Genealogy of the Holy War. It was originally supposed to be a much smaller game, but grew enormously in size as development continued. Kage even remarked that creating a large, brand new story in a world that already existed was extremely difficult, as creating characters with too large a significance or character would have conflicted with the story of Genealogy. At the expense of a fleshed out story came largely enhanced gameplay, something Thracia 776 is known for. It is extremely difficult. The game was initially released through the Japanese Nintendo Power Flash Kart system as an addition to faithful subscribers. This release was very popular, becoming the best-selling Super Famicom game of September 1999. However, despite its success compared to other Super Famicom games at the time, Thracia 776 unfortunately still holds the title for the worst-selling Fire Emblem game. But, poor sales does not mean anything bad about Thracia as a game. Despite selling poorly, reviews for the game were overwhelmingly positive and continue to be to this day. Since Thracia never got an English release, and we've already talked about Project Naga and Drug Drill translations, we've got to do something different for this little spot. And, as always, the section after this will be about how Thracia pulled inspiration from and inspired Fire Emblem, so I've decided that this specific section will be about the unique qualities of this game. Let's begin! First up is Elite Mode, which was actually hidden into the game in sort of a Konami Code type style. By starting a new game, highlighting an empty save slot, and then putting right left, right left, right left, and right right, you'll start the game with every unit possessing an Elite skill, which doubles their experience gain. And as stated before, this game is easily named by many fans to be the hardest in the series, but what does make it so hard? Well, it's not just one specific thing, but a variety of things that build up to make it one difficult thing to tackle. For one, this game is extremely unforgiving. The fog of war mechanic, which we'll discuss in depth later, is particularly brutal as it becomes darker than night. Healers, which are few in early game, have the ability to miss, thus leaving your units unhealed and vulnerable. The use of items is extremely encouraged throughout the game, especially on your main lord as the game progresses. These are just some of the things that make Thracia what it is, but remember, this is definitely not all of them. Thracia 776 takes a number of inspiration from past Fire Emblem games, of course returning grid-based play and turn-based combat, all the things that make it a part of the franchise. It of course also takes lots of inspiration and story and setting from genealogy, as it is a midquel. And as always, here's the several Fire Emblem archetypes that Thracia utilizes. For those who don't know, archetypes are basically certain types of characters that appear in multiple different Fire Emblem games, whether they share similarities in stats, or how their character contributes to the plot. Just a few of Thracia's archetypes are as follows. Ival and Dadgar are Jagans, Miranda and Sarah are Ests, Reinhardt is a Camus, and Alva and Kane are the Kane and Abel of this specific game. Hoo boy, buckle up for this one. For a game that many people skip, Thracia sure had a lot of influence on future Fire Emblem games. For example, Thracia introduced escape missions, something that were returned in Path of Radiance, Radiant Dawn, and Fates. Speaking of Fates, Thracia was also the first game in the series to introduce branching chapters, although the manner that Thracia handled this in comparison to Fates is just a little bit different. In Thracia, you could always go back and play the route that you did not choose, but Fates' split paths are completely separate games. Nonetheless, it is a similarity. Thracia 776 was also the first game in the series to implement rescuing. 
This allowed one unit to quote unquote rescue another, thus protecting them from the enemy turn. This would be something seen in a series all the way up to New Mystery of the Emblem, when it would be inevitably replaced by Pair Up and Awakening. Thracia also introduced Capturing as well. And we're still going here, folks. Another thing that Thracia introduced was the Fog of War mechanic, which was extremely disliked by the fan base. The basic premise of this mechanic is that it obscures the player's view and limits the range of units, but it was extremely disliked because it didn't affect the CPU enemies at all. Here's another thing that Thracia introduced, although not returning until much later. Fatigue! This has only been seen again in Shadows of Valencia, albeit much less harsh than it was in Thracia. I guess Intelligence System learned that getting your units tired is just as fun as getting tired yourself. For a game that most people skip, Thracia 776 sure was a game that had a lot of love and care put into it, as it was Shouzo Kaga's last game. It's a shame we'll probably not see intelligence systems do anything with it, given its reputation with the fan base and poor sales. But, in my opinion, Thracia really does deserve a chance to shine overseas, as it is a relatively complex game that serves as a good challenge. If you haven't played it, give it a shot, but I'd say look up some guides first. Thank you so much for watching this video, and there's something else I promised that would go at the end of this video, so here it is. So a couple days ago on the Fire Emblem Amino, I opened a poll entitled What Do You Think of Thracia 776? And here, as it promised, I'm going to read the results. 21.1% of the people said I love it, 10.5% of the people said they've never played it and they don't want to, and 68.4% the majority says they've never played it but they want to, and 0% of the people said that they don't really like Thracia 776, so let it be known, nobody really hates Thracia 776, the fan base has spoken. <laughs> no, but in all serious guys, thank you so much for watching.